Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm Jen Trechek. I'm clinical manager at Jigsaw, and this is Fiona, who's who's a, a clinical clinical worker at Jigsaw. Um, we're just doing this video as a follow up to the webinar that we did the other night on anxiety for for parents to support young people with anxiety. And there was a huge amount of questions and a huge amount of interest. And we just wanted to follow up on some of the questions because we didn't have time to answer them on the night. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than just taking these questions if you can go back and have a look at the webinar and the information that we presented it will we'll be kind of alluding to that and mm -hmm. um, we just wanted to say again and to reiterate that um, if you are worried about your young person and the level of anxiety that they're experiencing then please do speak to a GP or you can ring Jigsaw 1800 Jigsaw as a parent and speak to a clinician about your young person um, but we will try and answer some of the questions that came up because we think they might be um, they might make sense to other parents and they might be helpful for other people as well. Um, we also had a few questions for young people who are under the age of 12. Now um, in Jigsaw we work with people from 12 to 25 so that would be the age group that we're talking about and, and that we would um, that we would speak to in our, in our answers as well just to flag that. Yeah um, so we might kick off I guess so the first question um, came in and said, what is the next step in the process after getting in touch with Gigs Jigsaw if I recognize that my teenager has anxiety or stress issues? Um, so yeah, kind of like, like Jen said, I guess Jigsaw is it's a primary mental health service for young people with mild to moderate mental health difficulties between the ages of 12 and 25. So it's not a crisis service. And once you first get in touch um, with your local Jigsaw, you know, you just be asked a few questions, kind of make sure that 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 Jigsaw is the right service for your young person and then you'll be given an appointment over the phone um, and if they're under the age of 18 you know you'll be asked to come with them to their first meeting when then that clinician will work with you get to know what's going on for you a little bit better and kind of help them set a few goals um, in terms of what they might like to see changed. What I would just say is um, do speak to your young person first about whether they want to come to Jigsaw um, because we do have some parents who, who bring young people um, and the young person doesn't necessarily want to be there or to go. So um, it's really important uh, when people come to Jigsaw that they kind of get, get, get it themselves and they get the benefit because they want to come. So just have the conversation first about why you think Jigsaw might be a good option for your young person. Yeah, and if they are actually anxious around that, there is, you know, lots of videos on Jigsaw Online that kind of shows the local hubs and you can look at the clinicians that are working in each area. And that can kind of help to alleviate some of the anxiety as well is that kind of familiarity with what it might be like once they get there as well. So definitely, yeah, I would encourage you to use that. The next question here is um, how to support a teen when nerves kick in on the way to the dentist or driving test, etc. Um, which is a great question because I'm sure we've all been in that situation mm -hmm. where we feel nervous, we feel the butterflies. And, uh, and as we said in, in the um, webinar, anxiety mm -hmm. is there for a reason, but when it becomes too much, it's not helpful. So really um, focusing on bringing somebody back into the presence and trying to keep their mind focused on the task that they're doing or distracted from some of those worrying thoughts would be helpful. Um, so, you know, if you're going to the dentist with a young person, talking to them, keeping them engaged, talking to you, keeping them distracted would be helpful. Um, and then, um, as, as we mentioned in, in the webinar, some maybe grounding techniques or breathing techniques to help them to, to calm down the nerves would be useful. Um, and I'd say for kind of situations like that as well, like with a dentist or a driving test, you know, they will be interacting with somebody else and if possible to make that person aware. You know, if it's a driving instructor or the dentist that, you know, they are feeling a little bit nervous and that can often help, I guess, them in their engagement with your young person as well. Um, little things, you know, dressing comfortably, making sure there's enough water, having a solid meal. All those, those things can kind of help, you know, even the body to kind of stay calm in those situations as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... Um, Looking so, at the next, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> we've had a few, I suppose, and there's there's a few on a theme around mm -hmm. young people who are struggling with um, leaving the house um, to do mm -hmm. exercise in particular. So, uh, parents, it seems like struggling to encourage young people and teenagers to engage in some form of exercise during COVID nineteen. And there's been a few questions around it. Some because of a fear of going outside. Some it seems like the young person is maybe not motivated. Mm -hmm. um, to do it. So do you want to speak to that Fiona in terms of how to, to encourage young people to engage in a bit more? 
Yeah, I guess there's there's a few different ways. Um, and it is really about kind of listening to that young person as well. So what is it that they like to do in terms of exercise um, and getting them to kind of look at or explore that. It is really different right now. What might have worked for them before isn't necessarily available at the moment. So kind of helping them to explore what options I guess there are out there for them, um, doing it with them, you know, making it kind of a, a team thing or a family thing can be really helpful because then they don't, don't necessarily feel alone or it, that can help to reduce the anxiety if there's somebody there with them. Um, as well, maybe kind of looking at what day-to-day -day activities could be almost viewed as, as exercise, if it's getting them to kind of help you carrying groceries or moving things around the house. There are loads of different ways to kind of get your body moving that doesn't necessarily have to be doing squats or push-ups or whatever it is um, that, that are definitely really beneficial in, in and of themselves. Um, it strikes me, um, sometimes we talk about the idea of rolling with resistance and mm -hmm. sometimes when you kind of keep pushing one particular topic, the other person pushes back with nearly as much energy and it becomes a tussle. And I think sometimes when you're asking a young person to do something that they don't necessarily want to do or see the benefit of doing, it can nearly fall into that kind of get off my back and it becomes a, a, a big issue. And I think sometimes taking a step back from that and trying to find maybe a more subtle way around it can, can be useful. And now it's not always easy, but rather than going in with the exercises, trying to maybe not use that word even and, and think about activity or doing things with a purpose or, you know, I need, I need something from the shops. Can you go and, and get something for me or help me with that? Um, trying to find a, a kind of a, a sidestep around mm -hmm. the fact that it might be exercise and activity might be uh, one, one thing to consider rather than getting into a constant kind of battle over something like that because I think people dig their heels in more and more when it be becomes a little bit like a battle. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just looking at the next one here. So what to do kind of if your young person doesn't necessarily know that they're anxious? Um, I guess we, we will kind of get those calls quite often on the phone, you know, particularly when parents are first maybe considering um, recommending Jigsaw or kind of coming to Jigsaw in the first place. I think it's really important to kind of take on board how your child describes their feelings and, you know, what it is that they say to you about them. Because sometimes maybe what we observe as anxiety, they might actually feel is anger or it could be low mood. Um, so it's really important to give that space and to check in with your young person to explore what's going on for them. Um, but similarly, at the same time, they might not know that much about anxiety or kind of what it is that they're feeling or struggle to put a name on it. Um, so maybe explaining, I guess, it kind of as we did in the webinar, those physical sensations can be quite helpful um, or some of maybe the thinking traps that we were talking about and see if that does connect with what they're, they're, what's going on for them really, I guess. Um, any advice on helping kids reinteract with friends when restrictions lifted, especially when they're not overly social to begin with? Um, and we've had a few questions on that kind of theme of social interaction, social anxiety, that maybe it was a little bit difficult before lockdown and, and is still a difficulty now. Um, and, and kind of worried about it, it, it in, into the future as well. Um, and I suppose one of the things that I've reflected on in terms of interaction now is that actually some of the interaction via technology is, is really quite challenging for mm -hmm. all of us. You know, being on Zoom can feel mm -hmm. overwhelming when there's more than a couple of people on, on a call. It can be mm -hmm. difficult and it's quite an artificial thing. So it doesn't suit everybody. So I would say, you know, even at the moment when, when we're not, seeing as many people just thinking about alternatives things like um phone calls or you know encouraging people to write letters even or having some other way of communicating just maintaining some level of contact that doesn't necessarily involve full-on kind of zoom calls with, with, with lots of people might be something just to to consider um that it's not necessarily somebody being antisocial that they don't want to engage in those it's maybe just it's a little bit overwhelming and a little bit alien um and and you know not not necessarily helpful um, but then in terms of moving back into socializing again with peers I suppose th there's probably a lot of uncertainty for all of us in that and, and the fear might come from a number of different areas so there might be the fear of going out and, and you know being around people and the potential that that can bring for, for um, catching an illness or that kind of thing and then there's the actual 
underlying fear of being in a social situation or a group situation with other people that in itself can be inherently challenging. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose all of the principles that we talked about in the webinar are around kind of supporting people with anxiety apply regardless of the situation. So it's maybe understanding where the fear is coming from, what can we do to, to balance that and, and, and make that as, as kind of reasonable as possible when we're thinking about the situation and then gradually building up. So it might be a case of just going out for a walk with one friend rather than going straight into meeting with a group in a park, for example, mm -hmm. depending on, on what's feasible within the restrictions, of course, as well. Um, but, but kind of starting gradually and building up slowly i would say with all kinds of interactions um and looking at the support that you you know do you want me to come with you um do you want me to be there in the background do you want to just start for going out for a 10 minute walk or a 15 minute walk and come back um you know if a young person has an excuse of oh my mom made me and um, she wants me back in the house it kind of makes it a little bit easier to to escape from the situation but obviously we don't want to avoid the situ situation altogether so kind of building up and saying you know push it for for 15 20 minutes mm -hmm. gradually introduce more friends that kind of thing um and and i suppose similarly for for a lot of adults maybe think about your own experiences of when you when you think about going back out and reintegrating with people and um you know friends and seeing people again what does that bring up for you and and how are you kind of dealing with that yourself and maybe think um of sharing some of that with a young person you know it is it is a little bit scary and it is a little bit frightening when we think about going back into the the uh, wide world let's talk about how we're going to do that together mm -hmm. yeah no i think those are all all really good points and I, I think we did mention it in the webinar as well particularly with social anxiety it can be really helpful to role play or to kind of practice some of those situations at home um because a lot of the anxiety comes around that uncertainty or not knowing maybe how to deal with the situation or how to respond in the situation so if you're able to give space to that, to have that conversation, to practice how they might manage um, different potential circumstances they could find themselves in, or maybe if they have a friend, you know, a certain personality that makes them more kind of heightened than another, look at that and kind of give them space to explore that. Um, now, that way maybe it won't seem like so much to handle. That can kind of help the reduce the future worries in the moment now when we're, when we're not there yet as well. Yeah. There's a few questions here um, just around specifically young people who have um, experience of autism or ASD or other special needs. And I suppose that could be a whole webinar in, in and of itself. So we're not going to um, address those those directly here, but would say um, if you if your young person is involved with a team already, um, you know, a care team or a support team, either at school or um, through the HSC that you connect in with your team and, and talk about the specifics in relation to the current situation um, because although a lot of them are operating differently they are still operating on some level um, and, and would be available for advice and support yeah definitely um i see another one here so it's around teenager with anxiety about what's going to happen in the future the parents trying to listen openly but they're missing their friends feeling trapped um and asking specifically if there's anything to do to support her and naming that breathing doesn't really work. Um, and I guess that that is an important thing to say that I don't think we said during the webinar is, you know, these skills don't, or particularly mindfulness or breathing doesn't necessarily suit everyone. And that's totally okay. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. It is about figuring out what it is that works for that young person, what it is that works for you as well. Um, I think it, having a chat around that, you know, there could be different ways when certain people feel anxious they might like to be engaging in something to kind of help that regulation so it could be exercise could be writing in a journal could be listening to a playlist drawing going on a walk any list of those things um and kind of in line i guess with that having a sense of routine particularly when you're feeling kind of trapped at home can be quite helpful but one that does include things that isn't just schoolwork or it isn't um kind of just heavier you know there has to be space for some fun and for some normality and for some socializing as as it would be as well um yeah so kind of figuring out trying to organize something that would help for the whole family um because this person was specifically talking about noticing trying to, uh, to control her environment as a result of the anxiety as well um so although there might be a routine also allowing for the flexibility and you know validating that it's okay um and, and rolling with that when it does come up um, there's a, a question here um, about teenagers overusing PlayStation to mask their anxiety. 
mm. particularly with no normal social interaction at the moment, which is an interesting one and one that, you know, comes up a fair bit in terms of gaming mm -hmm. in general and, and young people and how much time should they spend gaming and or not gaming and, and what are we at to what what is the implications or, or what what can happen if people are gaming too much and i suppose one of the, the questions i would ask first of all before launching into to what you can do about gaming is ask well what are they actually doing on the playstation you know how are they using it um because a lot of gaming is online and um it can be really positive for some some young people it can provide a real kind of level of social interaction and engagement with other young people um through uh through gaming together um mm -hmm. there's lots of benefits in terms of um it can help with problem solving skills it can help with kind of manual dexterity there's lots of different kind of ways to view it mm -hmm. um so I, I, before kind of saying oh they're they're, they're playing too much i'd maybe find out a little bit more about what they're actually playing or what they're doing and what does that mean for them um mm -hmm. because gaming can be seen as an activity that is a useful outlet for a whole variety of different reasons um so that would that would just be my my first kind of thoughts on it is is first of all what what, what are they doing and what are, what is the impact and mm -hmm. I suppose the other thing to acknowledge is at the moment there are a lot less options for activities to do <laughs> so it's not it's not like there is a lot of kind of activities outside or or you know physical activities that people can engage in mm -hmm. um so i think probably a lot of young people are spending a lot more time on online and on games than they would do generally mm -hmm. So th I was thinking, you know, what, is it is it a problem? Is it a difficulty? Who's who's it a problem for? And having a conversation about it, you know, you as a parent, what are your expectations? What, how do you view this activity for your young person? What are their expectations? How do they view it as an activity? And then, you know, decide what what you're willing to to compromise on or or not. Um, and and that's a decision as a parent that that you can make. Um, in terms of masking anxiety, I mean, I guess any engaging in any kind of activity can be a distraction, a form of distraction from anxiety and gaming, no more or less than any other, you know, activity that 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 we might look to to engage with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and again, sometimes you know, distraction is a helpful coping in that moment. You know, it might, it might be needed to kind of keep keep them at a baseline, if possible. Having that conversation with them, you know, do you notice? when you go to play the game is it is it an everyday thing or do you notice that you're going when you're particularly feeling upset or distressed and how do you notice when you are playing what do you notice about afterwards and maybe getting them to make that connection if that is something that's going on for them um to kind of look at what the relationship i guess is with that game for them um and if it is something that maybe you're a bit concerned about what it is that they are doing you know offer to play with them <laughs> kind of learn a bit more about it learn a bit more about that language and about that world that way if you know, your concerns can come from a place of genuine experience as well. Um, and to kind of explore, you know, maybe there, you can learn some of the good things that there are about it as well as maybe areas to kind of watch out for or things to kind of be, you know, pay more attention to. Okay. Um, so um, sorry, I'm just gonna say there's a few more questions in general um, around the webinar, which we're going to post um, around some of the apps that we've mentioned around that, that are useful for anxiety. So just to say on Jigsaw Online, we have, you can search uh, mental health apps and we've got some information about different ones. The ones that we specifically mentioned were MindShift and Headspace, yeah. but there's loads of d different ones out there. Um, in terms of, um, webinars for young people we do we have a number of webinars online already for young for young people specifically if they want to watch them mm -hmm. we've got lots of content um kind of currently but also we're updating our content on jigs online all the time in response to the situation and what's coming down the tracks so there have been a few questions about kind of transitions from primary to secondary or from secondary to college and we're really aware that that is a concern for a lot of parents mm -hmm. so we we are putting up new content on jigs online all the time in relation to those different kind of evolving um issues that that are happening um so you can either come on the site at any stage stage jigs and and kind of see what's new or we have um 
twice weekly at the moment newsletters going out to people as well to kind of update them on what's new on the site so if you if you're interested in receiving that email directly you can just sign up on jigsonline.ie for the um regular email updates mm -hmm. and we'll kind of put it straight into your into your inbox um with an update as to what what we've kind of covered more recently so that there, there will be more content specifically for parents over the next while that might be helpful with that yeah and also just to say because um there is like a jigsaw helpline so it's 1-800 jigsaw that parents can call as well um for, you know if you have a more of an individual question or if you can't find something on the website you know feel free to go ahead and have a look at that and or you know have a ring um because it is staffed by jigsaw clinicians from 12 to 5 every day um, and you're, you know, more than welcome to kind of call and then air those concerns, maybe get a little bit of support for yourself as, as well as for your young person. Um, I think that was a really kind of the bulk of the questions I can see here. The, oh, there's the last one there. So how um, about trying to get children to kind of talk about how they're feeling? but it's kind of seen more as a chore than being helpful um, and kind of how, how to manage this. So I think the key is to kind of leave that door open. Really, it's, I think you know yourself probably from your own experience when somebody kind of keeps asking you what's going on for you, how are you feeling, are you sure? It can actually put up the defenses or maybe kind of shut someone down. So for sure, ask the question and kind of leave, but leave that door open as well. Um, I guess what, what can be helpful is kind of carving out space to spend with, you know, that young person or those young people in your life that, you know, might be a little bit more one-to-one -one or might be kind of doing bonding activities that kind of allow for more of a possibility for sharing that's not so direct in terms of the questioning. Um, and something as well, I think to always pay attention to is whether or not they're communicating verbally with you, you know, they might be communicating through their body language or, you know, their activities that they're engaging or not engaging in as well. Um, and that can be kind of important insight into what's going on for them. Not every child or every person is good at, at naming what, what that feeling is. Um, so if it's finding different ways for them to express, you know, there's some parents who communicate with their children through emojis, or there's some who kind of do art together or whatever that is. Um, I think being open to different avenues or different ways that might be comfortable for that young person will kind of maybe make that <laughs> feel less like a chore <laughs> if, if possible. Yep. The other thing I would say, and it can be difficult sometimes as a parent because mm -hmm. we want to be front and center in our young person's life, and that's completely understandable. Mm -hmm. But sometimes young people will choose a different adult to open up to, and that can feel really hurtful because it's not me. But I suppose as long as there's somebody in the young person's life who they feel comfortable to talk to, mm -hmm. um, maybe that needs to be enough sometimes. Um, and, and, you know, while we're waiting to, to have that kind of base where they, they do want to come and talk to us, then um, if they're talking to somebody else, that's great. And I suppose the other thing is sometimes young people are fine and they actually don't want to talk about things because there's nothing going on and they're not bothered and, and they don't, they're not feeling anxious, they're not feeling worried, they're not feeling down, they're just just getting on with things and they don't want to, don't want to talk about it. And that's okay, you know, we're, we're, I suppose all we can do is role model for ourselves where we're at and, and you know, give them the space, as you say, and, and maybe they'll come to it and maybe they won't and, and maybe that's okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so those are kind of the, the bulk of them really, I guess, to wrap up, I think it is really important to restate the importance of minding yourselves throughout all of this, you know, we did kind of talk about the end of the webinar, different ways to kind of engage in your own self care, and I think particularly Jigsaw Online has lots of brilliant resources um, for parents specifically, or parents and guardians, um, both around supporting young people in their lives, because that can obviously be something that causes a lot of worry, but then minding, minding their own mental health as well, because that is just as important. Um, so I'd definitely have a look at those and yeah <laughs> thank you yeah definitely thanks very much bye, bye. <laughs>